Hello everyone, and welcome to a new year here on Afro Lens. So, you guys made it very clear in the polls I shared a while ago that y'all wanted me to make a video explaining how to write black characters. Little confession here. I kind of just threw that option in there because I did not think so many of y'all would actually pick it. But you know, we're here now. I dug that grave for myself. I gotta commit, it's whatever. The reason I was nervous making this video was mainly that this is a very complex and nuanced topic. When I came about 30 pages into this script, that basically confirmed that this was going to be very lengthy. Some of y'all probably wanted me to give a clear-cut guide to writing black characters that weren't simplified to something like, oh, just write black characters as you do for every other character. But characters are a broad subject. The mere mention of the word probably has you thinking of a few of them right now, coming in all shapes, sizes, backgrounds, and company brands. You might even think of the same character as the other person watching this video, but with a different interpretation. Well, if characters as a concept can be this broad, how are you expected to write a black character as you do for any other character then? Depictions of black characters in media may come across samey, but the African diaspora comes with diverse backgrounds and experiences. And you, as a creator that wants to make a black character, should take that into account. This is why, starting this new year, I decided to turn this into a series called How to Write Black, where I'll be sharing some of my and other black creators' advice and opinions on various black characterizations. And for this first episode, we'll be going over blackness. But first, quick disclaimer, I am not the voice of every black person in existence. I just have my thoughts and opinions on certain matters that I'm willing to share on my platform. Also, while I'm mainly discussing these topics through an American lens, certain aspects still apply to the whole diaspora. So please, don't discredit what I say as simply an American issue. Now, we're starting off talking about blackness mainly because it will be frequently brought up in future videos. But what is blackness? Unfortunately, it doesn't have a clear definition, at least not the kind of blackness we are talking about here. Dictionaries will give you simple definitions regarding the actual color, a group of people with a specific skin tone, or pose it as a concept linked to evil and wickedness. But if you ask any black person what is blackness, you are going to get a lot of different personal remarks that go beyond what Oxford has to say. Given the history behind the creation of race, I think most of us understand blackness as a label was originally intended to be the opposite of whiteness. And according to this race-based system, whiteness is the default for beauty, purity, and all things good. While on the opposite side of the spectrum is blackness to represent the ugly and all things wicked. As you can imagine, a lot of members of the African diaspora tend to stay away from using the black or blackness label. Some even find the blackness label limiting, given it was used to generalize all these cultures and backgrounds as this one monolithic group. A single group that is all bad and performs every stereotype you've probably seen in an old Bugs Bunny cartoon or a Tyler Perry movie. Now for a lot of us, myself included, we thought of blackness as, you know, just typical black culture. But that's kind of hard to narrow down, considering that includes a wide range of cultural identities that not all of us are necessarily a part of. Eventually, some of us came to the conclusion that blackness is more of an experience. An experience, no matter how unique, is something you can only go through as a black person. The outlook of what that experience is also varies, but the general understanding of blackness seems to be this awareness that you as a black individual will be other no matter which group you fall under, even amongst other others. But there's also this sense of celebration for your community's differences. You're not obligated to fit under what society makes you out to be. You just be the best version of you. Now, what makes a person black is still debatable, hence why it is a tough conversation to have. And yes, you'll find many ideas of what it means to be black, even amongst black people. 
some bringing in valid points, I guess, and others sounding like a certain dog whistle. But like I said, the African diaspora is very complex, so it is to be expected we have different ideas of things. Just, you know, don't be weird with it. Some of us, though, especially those of us in the Americas, will take on the Black label as an identity because it was the only thing we had to go by to create a community. The same way we reclaimed slurs used against us, we took the Black and Blackness labels and turned it to mean something different for us compared to, you know, its original context. Again, it does not mean all those under the African diaspora accept this label. And I don't blame them the same way I understand a lot of us still don't care to say, you know, the N-word. So when I talk about Blackness in future videos, I am referring to the experience and complex nature of it. Just keep in mind, as you create a Black character, their Blackness is just going to be attached to them regardless of their overall characterization. You can make a story not about race at all, but that doesn't take away their blackness, which if you're not careful of, it can alter the context within your story. How so, you ask? Well, let's go over this 1953 sci-fi comic called Judgment Day, which I will link down in the description box below. The story is about an astronaut from Earth that visits another planet full of robot people. He's there to judge whether or not the robot people are suited to join Earth's Galactic Republic. The astronaut is greeted by some orange robot people who give him a tour of their home, hoping to prove how civilized they are. Despite the planet's many technological achievements, there is still a prominent issue with the relations between the orange robots and the blue robots that also occupy the planet. The astronaut takes his orange robot guide to witness the oppressive state of the blue bots. Even after witnessing how the blue bots are essentially the same in every way as the orange bots, aside from superficial color paint job, the guide still didn't understand what the problem was. And so the astronaut concluded that the robot planet was not ready to join the Galactic Republic. But he does leave some encouraging words for his guide that there is still hope for the orange bots to change their bigoted ways, as Earth was able to change itself for the better. The astronaut returns to his spaceship, finally takes off his helmet, and travels back home. So, yeah, the reveal here is the astronaut, who had his helmet on until the last panel, is a black man. Now, imagine if this character were a white man, as the story kinda alluded he was up until the end. The message wouldn't hold up, at least not the same one this story was trying to execute. Had the astronaut been revealed to be a white person, all you get is the typical white savior story. Which is a problem with these sort of sci-fi stories that present a plot point like alien invasions or racial discrimination. These are very real issues still geared against marginalized groups. But, you know, you just present it as an alien concept. Also, the victims or heroes gotta be white because, again, According to this race-based system we live in, whiteness has to be the default in everything. Even if the story compromises its own message to establish this. So to then reveal that the astronaut in Judgment Day was a black man, it actually adds more context to this short story. Because we now see the astronaut as a black man, we as the audience now understand why he specifically was chosen for this mission. We understand how he was able to recognize discrimination against the blue robots, and how he was able to explain it very thoroughly to his guide. His identity as a black person provides unspoken implication that he just seems to, you know, get it. We don't know how far into the future this is, where Earth's racism seems to not be that much of an issue, but I'm sure his parents and schools taught Earth's history somehow. That's how you know this is science fiction. They trusted a black man into space and from the sounds of it, they allowed critical race theory to be taught in schools. Jokes aside, Judgment Day was able to achieve the message they wanted readers to get just by making the astronaut black. His very presence, his blackness, added new perspectives to the story. Alright, 
I'm sure some of y'all are kind of dreading these statements thinking I am confirming this very popular belief that including diversity of any kind makes a story political. To that, I say, whatever. For one thing, Judgment Day already is a political story. Making the conscious decision to have one of your main characters a black person is of course going to add onto its already politically charged commentary. Politics is a ubiquitous topic in social settings already, so reason serves that it will be featured in a lot of tales. That doesn't mean blackness or diversity are all political by nature. It just adds more factors to consider in your story that can potentially serve as a political statement of its own, depending how it's framed, of course. If you find adding diversity into something makes it political automatically, then chances are that either the story already had a political message to begin with, or it's only political when you choose to view it as such, so you know, you have an excuse to be mad at something. If it's the latter, then you should probably ask yourself why that is before you go screaming at children for liking a black mermaid princess. Nevertheless, you should always be conscious of the factors that can come with including a black character into your story. And that is just something you have to consider for any character you throw in. A character's identity, their very being, determines how their environment is going to react to their presence. And while how everything reacts at the end of the day is determined by you, the writer, it doesn't mean the real world implications no longer exist. And that's usually the issue that comes with stuff like race blind casting. When you decide that you're not going to think about the implications of inserting certain groups of people into a role, there's a likely chance that is going to end up disastrously, to say the least. Just think of how many black and or lesbian cops we have, despite these groups in real life are usually the most likely to be brutalized by law enforcement. Do they exist? Yes. But that doesn't make them any better as a cop. Also, you should question why copganda media believes they are able to humanize themselves by making it seem they are just all mainly made up of marginalized identities. Let's see, um, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about how you can include black characters even when you're not familiar with the experience. Because like I said, the only way to experience blackness is to be black. No, this does not mean being in close proximity to black people automatically makes you understand that experience as a non-black person. Anyways, logically speaking, black people would probably have a better understanding of how to incorporate blackness into these characters. So if you want to make a black character but don't know where to start in that process, consult with black people. And no, not just any random black person, at least try to consult with black people that best match the description of the black character you are working on for their input. If you're making a black character that lives in the Bronx, for instance, then it would make sense to gain insight from black people living in the Bronx rather than talking to someone in California. Same with if you're seeking advice from disabled black people, LGBT+, and so on. Now, don't be surprised if said black people respond by telling you to look up this information yourself. Because yes, the internet does indeed exist. Black people being treated as the teachers for everything wears us down real fast. What you think might be a simple question could actually be very annoying and tedious when asked to the same person dozens of times. Black people are not obligated to be everyone's educators, especially if you don't offer to pay us. If you're offended when a black person tells you to look things up, and you respond by saying, oh, I would've, but I figured it's better to get it straight from the source rather than just endlessly scrolling, think to yourself. If you can't put in the time to do your own research, why should a black person hold everything they are doing just to make the time to educate you? Now, lucky for you, many black people have and still share writing resources pertaining black characters, design, and history. Have whole blogs about it and everything, look at that. Like, look, I have a few characters that are from New Orleans. I know very little of New Orleans, and I know no one from there. But you bet I'm going to look up YouTube channels of Black residents that are so kind to share 
or their own culture and history. Researching can be very enlightening as you come across information you would have never encountered before. If you find all of this tedious though, then becoming a writer just might not be your thing. If you are writing about something you are unfamiliar with, it is your duty to put in the effort to research and talk to those familiar with it. Imagine making a show, uh, let's say coming from the top of my head, um, let's say a mixed Chinese-Italian fashion designer. How exactly would you go about that characterization if you know nothing about these spaces other than some superficial stereotypes you've seen in passing? The reason I'm emphasizing this point where you have to do your own research and include others' input is because people in the industry really hate doing that bare minimum just to pay respects to a group's culture they are essentially profiting off of. So does that mean non-black people shouldn't even write about black characters to begin with? I think anyone is capable of writing characters with backgrounds they don't fully understand. If we can make stories about scientists and chefs despite having little insight to these fields, you can apply that same logic to everything else. Just put in the effort to research and include the input of those who share their experiences with these topics. Now, as I say this, I do want y'all to change your mindset here a bit. If you wish to want to see more representation of a certain marginalized group, it would be more beneficial for y'all to support mediums created by said groups. How often do we hear about a project that is supposedly diverse, and upon looking into it, hardly any members of the writing staff come close to representing that diversity? Which, you know, any of us could tell you that was the case just by glancing at the project. I'm not making these videos to scare y'all away from making a black character. Like, something I noticed within the polls is that a good number of those who voted for me to talk about this were actually black people themselves. Yes, we are diverse, but years of conditioning and generational drama through society convinced us that we can only be this one thing we are told to be. I can still recall moments in my BSU meetings that display this. I suggest ideas for cultural activities like taking samba and swing sessions. They'd be turned down because a lot of members didn't know how these were connected to blackness, even though these dances were created by those of the African diaspora. Thankfully, through each generation, more and more resources become easier to access. So a lot of us, including me, are still in the process of obtaining as much information we can. But Afro, you ask? I thought you said black people automatically would know what blackness is. And no, I didn't. Blackness is an experience, but that doesn't mean all of us are aware what that experience is. That is why I emphasize that some black people probably, probably have a better understanding of it, but not all. That is why, as you should for anything you research, always collect a good amount of sources and fact check to see if they are reliable. Don't be afraid to hear out black people with different opinions, you know, as long as they don't harm you. And don't turn to the nearest black associate you have and base all their statements as absolute fact. I don't want y'all to even do that for me. Sorry if this wasn't the clear-cut guide y'all were expecting, but like I said, this is a complex topic that can't be reduced to one video. But I hope you guys at least took away some helpful notes here. Woo! Yeah, that was a lot of it to unpack. And yet, I still don't think I covered as much as I originally wanted to. Guess it was a good call to turn this into a series then. Even though I will continue this topic as a series, I do want to try to get other content out there if I could. Also, some of y'all are still asking how to get into screenplay writing and camera operations. Those are some other things I do want to make videos on. And possibly, just possibly, I might make those into other series too. Anyways, it's only February, but a lot of us are going through it right now. So I appreciate y'all for making the time to watch my videos. If you'd like to support me and the channel, here are some of my donation transfer accounts. 
I'll see you guys in my next video or my next post and or whatever. And well, bye.